Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 11th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see the system that we've been dealing with for the last couple of days, some thunderstorms and precipitation and a lot of cloud cover with this system. The next area of concern is up here across portions of Canada, and this is going to move down across Pacific Northwest all the way down the West Coast to California. And we'll take a look at what kind of weather we can expect from that as we go through the video here this morning. So taking a look at what happened yesterday, if you look closely, you can see we had lightning strikes across Oregon, Idaho. We had some moving up into Washington here as well. And if we go on all the way towards this morning, kind of see the storm is starting to pivot through, but we still have some rounds of precipitation associated with that, including some light precipitation across Northwest Washington. But yeah, we had pretty good rounds of thunderstorms, for some of Eastern Oregon, Idaho, and a few thunderstorms here across some of Washington and portions of Western Oregon. So taking a look here at this weather station, this is a very fun weather station. It's not too late to get one of these before the weather starts getting crazy here in the Pacific Northwest. All solar powered, wireless, easy to hook up. You flip a switch and it starts running and it broadcasts to the internet and it talks to other weather stations. Very fun stuff. Stores all the data for you in the cloud. Click on the link down below to save 10% off. So we're going to switch things up a little bit here. We're going to look at temperature first because this is what is upcoming. This is the parent temperature and this is taking the wind chill factor into account. So watch what happens. I want to kind of highlight what happens as we go through Monday morning. Look at this cold air moving down across the region. You can see what it feels like outside or what it will feel like or forecast to feel like. There's Bellingham and you can see some areas in the low 30s across western Washington, maybe some mid 30s out there. And you can see it encompasses on virtually the entire region all the way out towards the Oregon coast. And look some of the higher terrain, some of these wind chill values down into the single digits across British Columbia, some of the Cascades into the 20s and the teens as well, and very chilly east of the mountains also. And you'll see that's going to uh, also kind of duplicate itself there on Tuesday. I mean, look at Seattle. It's going to feel like 40 degrees out there. Pretty big shock to the system. Over, You know, you got to remember, it's just still the first half of October. We're not even anywhere really close to November or December just yet. But we are getting a little bit of a taste of some wintry weather here across the region. Although we're going to be dealing with some snowfall in the mountains. It's not going to get into the lower elevations this round. But I'll show you why this is also the setup that is the classic playbook for snow here into the lower elevations but you have to be in the right part of the season to get it so taking a look here at seattle tacoma what i've got here is cloud cover and as we go on in through the day on monday you can see this blue right here there's some couple of sunny days coming up here likely on monday and probably tuesday maybe even again on wednesday before we bring another system towards the end of next week but you can see the clouds here associated with this next system but we have a couple cool brisk days probably showing up some of my favorite weather of the year when we're not dealing with storms anyway some of the brisk northerly winds cool temperatures and some sunshine so take a look at what is going on here across the northern pacific there's japan to the far left there's the hawaiian islands pacific northwest to the upper right you put this into motion and you can see for example this tropical system here really bringing this heat transfer process up towards the poles and then this in turn allows for this next trough to drop down look at this very dry air a modified arctic air moving down across pacific northwest i use that term very loosely here because this is not not one of those big, you know, severe Arctic weather outbreaks here, but it is again the playbook of what could happen later in the season that could bring some lower elevation snowfall. But you can kind of see that trough opening up across Pacific Northwest and tumble down towards uh, the state of California. So if we look at that here at 18,000 feet, you can also see the models are in pretty good agreement with that kind of opening up right across Pacific Northwest here. Big ridge out across the Gulf of Alaska. You can see the north and the northeast flow on the backside, the eastern periphery of that ridge, carving out over the Pacific Northwest and then moving down the coastline. And then as we go on into the end of next week, you can see the next system starting to round this high pressure system out over the Pacific Ocean. So we're probably not going to stay you know, dry for too long. Looks like another system is like likely on the way towards the end of next week, but we'll worry about them that more here over the next few days. And looking at precipitation here, again, as we go through the day today, rain off and on for much of the region. And as we go on in through Sunday, you start to see some of the snow flying for British Columbia, some of the Washington Cascades as that next system approaches. You can kind of see the surface feature right there, the subtle troughing with that colder air moving into BC. You see this pressure gradient setting up that's going to be blowing out of the north and the northeast back down across the area. You see this precipitation 
precipitation moving across western Washington, western Oregon. Again, mountain snows ongoing through Sunday night. And you can kind of see right there, 1,006 millibar low right off the coastline. But you also see some of this higher pressure. I mean, what is this? The 1020 line is right there. So you're looking at 18 millibar difference. Pretty big pressure gradient from the interior of British Columbia towards southwest Washington. And that is typical of something that we would get later in December, January, and February that could bring snow into lower elevations. But this air is not yet cold enough uh, out across BC to really do that. But it is that setup. And then we scroll on in towards Monday. You see the system peeling down the coast towards California, still bringing precipitation on Monday to much of Oregon, even some mountain snows all the way up into the Cascades a little bit there. But as we go through Tuesday, you can see we're really starting to clear out and probably Wednesday, another fairly clear day here for much of the region. And I should use caution with saying some of that because this system does peel up across portions of Oregon, Idaho, towards the Rocky Mountains. I don't want to leave that out. There's Yellowstone and portions of Southwest Montana as well. So watch out for that moisture. It doesn't really give you a much of a break there. You can see that precipitation here for portions of Western Montana through Tuesday and on in through Wednesday, another slug of moisture moving up there. But for Seattle and Portland, likely on Monday, you're clearing out a bit. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, you might stay dry. But then the next system starts to approach from the Northwest. Now, looking at a little bit closer detail here, as we scroll through towards that next system moving down, there is going to be some convective available potential energy. And as this very modified Arctic front moves down, we start to get the north winds. We could get some lower level convergence. We could kick off a thunderstorm in some of these areas as we go through Sunday evening. And then it kind of moves down the coastline. Wouldn't be surprised to see some of that action Sunday night. And then you can see that instability with the upper level low sliding down the coastline and the surface low, by the way. Now, taking a look here at the Wind. So I'll put this into motion and you'll see we've got the onshore flow going as we go through the day today. You can see it coming down the Strait of Georgia, northwest winds off the coastline there, and then we start to go off in towards Sunday morning. And what do you see here? Well, we start to bring that northeast flow down the Fraser River Valley, spilling out over into some of the Salish Sea, across some of the San Juan Sea, the northerly winds moving across portions of Vancouver Island also. And again, if we were later in the season, and this is pouring a lot of cold air out, this would be a very interesting scenario for some of the lower elevations. You see the northerly start to make their way down the Puget Sound Sunday afternoon, and eventually you can see that surface low pivot down towards southwest Washington, and then you're getting that north low across the region. You can even see it coming through the, uh, the Okanagan River Valley as well. And then you see these offshore winds really take over, and some of these gusty winds moving down out of the north and northeast across the Cascades, eastern Oregon, Washington, and you can see those blowing all across the region by the time we get on towards the day Monday as that storm system pushes down towards southern Oregon and California. Now, if we take a look at some of these wind speeds here, look as we go through the day Monday, some of these north winds could be a problem. I mean, you can see that out across some of the, the San Juans there and through the Fraser River Valley. It's showing some gusts up into the mid-40s there and out towards portions of Vancouver Island. It also brings some gusts up over 30 across some of the Kitsap Peninsula. And some of the European is showing a little bit higher for Seattle as well. So when these north winds come, our trees are not used to that. There's still a lot of leaves on the trees. We could even get some minor tree damage across some of the region from these gusty winds and you can also see how the winds gust across some of the Oregon Cascades look at that some more widespread 50 mile per hour gusts may come out of the east and the northeast now looking at the European I'll scroll through this pretty quick but you can see some of these gusts getting up over 30 miles per hour it doesn't take much I've seen power outages occur along some of the Puget Sound with just some gusts into the mid 30s especially kind of early in the season so just kind of keep that in the back of your mind that is as we go on in through the day on Monday now, uh, looking at Seattle, Tacoma, again on Monday, you can kind of see the, the mean is right around the low 30s there. So again, that could cause some minor tree damage there. Again, just the direction being the problem out of the north. Now, watch what happens with dew point temperature, kind of classic when some of this Arctic or modified Arctic air moves across the region. Look at how we dry out. You can see it really, the transformation that we go through as we go through the day on Sunday. And look at some of this dry air just sag across the region, offshore winds as we really dry out as we go through the day Monday. Monday. Might need some chapstick early in the season stuff. Get some Carmex out. Now, taking a look at the European on the uh, the surface pressure. So if we scroll through here, again, you'll see that surface low right there. And you can really see that higher pressure pushing down. And that's why that offshore flow comes and pushes that modified Arctic air down across the area. And you can see how it's setting up for a very major storm system across portions of California. So watch that on the California Weather Watch channel also. 
Now, accumulated positive snow depth change in inches. So as we scroll on in through tonight into tomorrow morning, see we start to build up a little bit of snow for the higher terrain of the Cascades. And then you can kind of see Stevens Pass as you're going through the day Sunday, Sunday morning, it starts sticking a little bit there at Stevens Pass, according to the European, maybe a couple inches there. That can cause some travel issues as well. And a little bit sticking at Snoqualmie. It shows about a half an inch there or so. More across the higher train, probably 97, Highway 97, getting a little bit more. White Pass, maybe a little bit more than Snoqualmie as well. But you can see some areas getting up over six inches. This is actual accumulation on the ground. And if you see some of the social media posts out there with snowfall, they'll show you a different map that shows bigger amounts but this is what's likely to be on the ground you can see a nice coating there for the olympic mountains as well that should look nice as we clear out for tuesday and wednesday and then if you have this is that total snow couture ratio. You can kind of see if you see some of this hype machine going on on the social media sites. You know, you can kind of throw this out. You're not going to be expecting, you know, probably two feet of snow on the ground at the same time. So this doesn't take into account melting and whatnot. So there's White Pass. You can see that freezing level dropping down as we go on in through late tonight and in through Sunday. There's Snoqualmie Pass. The freezing level gets pretty close there as we go through Monday morning. Stevens Pass, it does drop below pass level here as we go on in through Sunday night. So heads up for that. And apparent temperature. So we'll kind of take a wider look at things here and we'll scroll on in through uh, Sunday morning. You can kind of see that colder air starting to bottle up there across the interior of British Columbia. Again, it's just not that cold at this time of year. There hasn't been enough time to really cool off the northern latitudes to really bring a true Arctic blast down into the region but you can see we do cool off and by monday morning a lot of the region here is going to be pretty chilly especially up across british columbia some of the rocky mountains some of the higher terrain there cascades of washington and you're going to feel that into the lower elevations as well and then where we go on the, the daytime highs there on monday and then we go on in through tuesday tuesday morning again very chilly across the region and then we scroll out towards the day on tuesday so it might be some nice sunshine maybe some very nice weather here as we go through tuesday wednesday and we await that next system i mean look at wednesday up into the 60s and some bright sunshine brisk conditions very nice so taking a look at the let's take a look at the extended forecast here with the artificial intelligence on the left and the gfs on the right again good agreement with that initial system rolling through here but what we want to know is what's going to happen after that do the models show that next system towards the end of next week well they do in one flavor or another the gfs a bit further north with this but yeah we'll watch that one coming up so the models are starting to point at that system here towards the end of next week and then maybe staying active look at the gfs and both of them want to show another decent system as we go on in through all the way on in through next week and this is october 19th or so and we're on october 11th today keep scrolling off what else do we got yeah kind of typical fall stuff off and on but look at that ridge that it was to show way up in fantasy land throw that out six to ten day below normal west coast and i don't even know why i show this sometime or it's not giving us much information check back on a daily basis if you want to know what's going to happen in the extended and check out the patreon page as well but anyway i'll get this video out hopefully you guys are having a good day and I will talk to you guys later.